Hey music makers, welcome back to Make the Music. I've got another video today. Today I'm covering how to mix bass guitar and the mistake everyone makes when it comes to mixing bass. There, t there, ha there has to be a lot of things that goes into making the bass both fit in the low end but not you know cloud the kick drum or make it so that you can't hear the kick drum but also give it some presence in the top end so it pokes through on speakers that maybe don't have a lot of sub or bottom in and so the bass guitar is actually a very tricky instrument to, instrument to mix if you boost the wrong frequencies it's just going to sound very flabby and muddy with not a lot of clarity not a lot of bottom end just a lot of sort of overall beef that's muddy enough and clouding up your mix however if you don't add the correct frequencies such as the sub low end and the top end is just going to straight up disappear. So what we want to look at here is I have a mix here. I have the vocals off just so you can see or just so you can hear what this mix sounds like with the bass. Here's my bass guitar. I've got it going on in the intro here. So that's what it sounds like in this intro and if I go to like the last chorus Even though there's a lot of instruments going on, you can still hear the bass pretty well, and there's a few reasons for that. And so I kind of call this the Chris Lord algae trick because when I was watching him do uh, one of his mixes and for like a mix of the, for the masters or something like that, he really talks about how he adds tons of top end to his bass guitars, especially in rock mixes. I'm talking about this is a rock pop rock song. It, it can kind of apply to a lot of different kinds of music, but he was specifically talking about in his mix. He adds tons of top into the bass so you can hear the stringiness and you can hear it uh, actually cut through and it has some presence. I don't always mix it like this for every song, but for something like this, I did want the bass to have some presence. So I'm going to break down my chain here and show you how I'm able to get that bass to sound good. So if we go to the intro, I have my bass guitar broken up into two different sounds and this is a common way to do this. I have an amped sound here. Let's just use a bias uh, amp. I think it was an amp peg with, and it's got uh, it has got quite a bit of distortion on it. You don't have to distort your bass much. I actually did it, you know, specifically for this song. But adding a bit of distortion can add some compression and top end to help it cut through. And I have a DI sound. And if I take my processing off. That's what it sounds like. And another important part to your bass tone is using fresh strings. You'll find that over time when your bass loses that, uh, the strings that are fresh, it just loses the sustain of the notes, the attacks. The tone really goes down sharply. You can, you can just tell over time. And uh, you, maybe when you're recording with a five, six month old string bass, you don't notice it then, but then you put new strings on, you're like, wow, I was really missing out. It can really help add body to your bass guitar. So that's the sounds without my processing. I have three plugins on it, but let me play it with the, the effects bypassed. The last chorus. It sounds fine, but it just sounds like the bass guitar is missing. If I enable the, the chain here. It's just it finally pops back in the mix as more bottom end and presence. So let's break down this chain here. It's the first plugin I'm using, of course, virtual mix rack. You don't have to have virtual mix rack. The same principles apply to this mix, but I'm using virtual mix rack here and I got quite a few plugins going on. So the first thing I'm using is this virtual channel. All this does is add you know, virtual am, uh, emulation. And I probably just maybe grabbed a slate preset that's possible, but I'm using the, the Brit 4KE here. Add a little bit on the 1073, the, the virtual drive. I'm high passing the bass a little bit, not doing too much with the EQ, it looks like. I'm using this FG Stress or the, the Distressor emulation here, uh, and it's doing a bit of compression on the entire bass sound. So we're doing about 3 dB of gain reduction there, and it's, and it's at a 2 to 1 ratio, and it's adding a bit of crunch to that bass guitar as well. There's already a bit of distortion, but we're actually getting some more compression out of that. That adding some thickness, but there's that top end. I'm adding quite a bit of shimmer here with this plugin. Let me take these other plugins off. So you can feel it's compressed, it's thicker. Mm -hmm. 
You don't want to be too shy with compression, compression with your bass, especially in a rocks mix, if you want to keep it present and then also uh, making sure your EQ is in line as well. Then I'm coming in with Rhea EQ, and this is where I'm really making some more of my EQ moves here. A lot of people, they'll just add an overall shelf to the low mids, not the way to mix bass. You want to add a little bit here, wherever the resonant note is. You actually want to high pass your bass as well. People don't understand that. But I have it high pass up to 68 hertz. This leaves room for the kick drum. So if I were just to play the drums here. So you can see hear that click drum or uh, that kick drum clearly, um, but it's working with the bass guitar and it's creating a nice unison there and it's not you know clouding it up. If I just boosted 50 hertz on the bass guitar, you'd, you'd slowly start to hear that kick drum absolutely disappear. You know, I'm gonna try that so. So you could hear that, <laughs> it, it, start, it started getting tough to hear. And now we can hear the kick drum again, right? So that's one of the keys with the EQ. And then I'm cutting off some of the high, high top end that I don't need. Um, I already boosted plenty of top end here with the virtual mix rack, with the shimmer here. You can hear that really add presence. So I didn't feel like I needed to then boost it with the stock EQ again. Then I'm using the Shep's Omni channel and this is probably doing a little more compression. So we're getting, we're getting another dB of compression out of this one. And this is at a 3.5 to one ratio, decently slow attack, fast release. And that's pretty much what this is doing here. I'm adding even more low end here, 3.7 dB at 118 Hertz, just above where that kick drum sits. What you can hear when I do multiple stages of EQ and compression with the bass guitar is it helps keep the low end even when I play higher notes on the neck. For example, on the bass, I go up to the 10th, 12th, 15th fret on the A strings, and it, your bass guitar tends to lose low end when you go that high. It's just kind of natural, but I want to keep the low end with every note. So when you compress, add some low end, add some low end again, compress, almost like a multi-band situation. It can keep the low end even when I go up on those higher notes because so much of it has been added and compressed together. So you can even hear the low end on those higher notes. Here's in the context of the entire mix. So what's our overall approach here to mixing bass guitar using the CLA trick, right? One is split the sing signal, amp signal and DI signal, then use some processing, add some compression, add plenty of top end to give it presence, compress the rest of the signal, and then go through and add some more low end, compress again, adding more low end there. This is going to give you plenty of bottom while taking out the frequencies you don't need, such as the low, low subs and the high, high highs give you plenty of bottom, plenty of presence with something like the, the shimmer control on the revival and then compressing it to the sound is constant and then giving you that constant low end with every note. So that is my tip for mixing bass guitar using the CLA trick as I'm going to call it. Uh, let me know what you do to mix bass guitar in a rock mix. I'd be very interested to have a conversation with you about that. There's plenty of ways to do it. This is just my way that I did on this specific track. There's a lot of ways to do it. It really depends on the style of music. Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe to the channel to see more mixing tips like this. Now get back to the making the music. Come on, go.